Here's another example. My leaving group, is it stuck to a primary, secondary, tertiary, or stabilized carbon? It's, of course, secondary, which means that it could be SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. Next question, is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? This is a lithium, which I can think of as being a negative charge. And you'll note that that negative charge does not resonance delocalize. Thus, this is strong. So it must be either SN2 or E2. Last question, is my nucleophile slash base a nuke or base? It's larger than ethanol when I draw it on paper, and it's not acetate or a sulfide. Thus, I can say this is a base, which means it will proceed through an E reaction. It will be E2. What this means, of course, is that this base can come and either grab a hydrogen at this carbon, push the electrons down, kick off the leaving group in one fell swoop, forming a carbon-carbon double bond here. Or it can grab the hydrogen at this carbon, pumping the electrons down, kicking off the iodide to form a carbon-carbon double bond here. Thus, I will get these two products. The more favored of the two will, of course, be this one right here, because it's the more substituted alkene by Zaitsev's rule. Let's look at this example. My leaving group stuck to a primary, secondary, or tertiary carbon. It is, of course, stuck to a secondary carbon. That tells me it could be either SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. My nucleophile slash base, is it strong or weak? I, of course, have a localized negative charge on a carbon. Thus, it is strong, which means it's going to be either E2 or SN2. Next question, is it a nuke or a base? You'll note that when you draw this cyanide group on paper, it's smaller than ethanol. Thus, it's small enough to come in here to this carbon, do an S and 2, and form a bond there, kicking off the iodide in a single step, meaning it is going to proceed through an S and 2 mechanism. I will, of course, get this product with an inversion of stereochemistry, because the cyanide nucleophile has to attack from the backside relative to where this iodine is. OK, I hope you're having a good time so far. Let's do some more examples, looking at this one. Same exact molecule we looked at before. We note that the iodine leaving group is attached to a secondary carbon, which means it could proceed by SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. I go to my next question. Is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? It's, of course, strong. Is it a nuke or a base? It's larger than ethanol, thus it is a base. Because it's a strong base, it's, of course, going to proceed by an E2 reaction mechanism. Thus, this strong base can come in, form a bond with a hydrogen at this position, dumping the electrons down and kicking off the iodide in one fell swoop, forming a carbon-carbon double bond to the right. Or it can do the same thing at the left. Now, please note that if this base forms a carbon-carbon double bond at the position to the left, it could form two different isomers. The isomer shown here, which is the E isomer, or the isomer shown here, which is the Z isomer. In reality, both of them will form. The E isomer will, of course, be the more stable and thus the more favored isomer. If I form a carbon-carbon double bond at the terminus, however, I also get this product here. In reality, I will likely get a mixture of all of these, with the one shown here at the left being the major product. All right, let's look at another example. Is my leaving group stuck to primary, secondary, tertiary, or stabilized carbon? It's, of course, secondary, which means it could be SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. Is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? I've got a delocalized negative charge, which means that it's weak, which implies that it's going to proceed either through SN1 or E1. Is my nucleophile slash base a nucleophile or a base? It's larger than ethanol on paper. However, this is one of the exceptions that I told you to memorize. This guy will behave more as a nucleophile. Thus, this will proceed by an SN1 mechanism. My iodide takes off, giving me a carbocation cation intermediate. My weak nucleophile comes in and forms a bond between this oxygen and that positively charged carbon center, giving me this product. I, of course, lose all of the stereochemistry as I proceed, giving me a mixture of both enantiomers. All right, I hope you're having fun. Here's another example. Now I've got something very, very similar, except my leaving group isn't quite as good of a leaving group. This is an OH instead of an iodine or a bromine. An OH is not quite as good. But I can still go through the same questions. Is my leaving group stuck to primary, secondary, tertiary, or stabilized carbon? It's, of course, secondary, which means it could be SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. Is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? Well, this is interesting, because you'll note it's actually an acid. There's no localized negative charges anywhere. So it's going to have to be weak, which means it's going to proceed through either an SN1 or an E1 mechanism. Is this nucleophile slash base a nuke or a base? Well, you notice that it's eventually going to give me an acetate nucleophile, which is one of the exceptions I told you to memorize. It is going to be a nuke. Thus, this will proceed through an SN1 mechanism. The mechanism for this one is actually a little bit interesting, and I wanted to show it to you. What occurs is we have our starting material alcohol, which is going to, of course, look over here and see our molecule, which is acetic acid. 
What's next going to happen is the lone pairs in this oxygen are going to reach out, form a bond with that hydrogen, pumping the electrons up onto the acetate and giving me this intermediate. This is, of course, a positively charged oxygen. And the reason is not because it lacks a full octet, but because it's forming three bonds. At this point, that positively charged oxygen takes off as a water leaving group, which is a very good leaving group, giving me a secondary carbocation at this position. This is, of course, completely congruent with an E1 mechanism. My acetate nucleophile now comes in and forms a bond with that carbon, giving me my final product. Because this acetate can come in either from the front or the back, three-dimensionally speaking, I get a mixture of both enantiomers at this stereocenter. I hope this lecture's journey of going through this process of determining whether something will be E1, E2, SN1, or SN2 has been fruitful and enjoyable for you. In my final lecture in this chapter, I'll show you guys how to use elimination substitution reactions in synthesis, which I hope you're looking forward to with great anticipation. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.